that uh, Alan's going to take the service again today, right? No. <laughs> I do. I do have a before we get started this morning with our uh, let's make a deal sermon. Uh, Brother Carl asked me this morning if he could come up and give a testimony. So Carl, come on up. It's up. Good morning, everyone. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas to you and your family. And may God bless y'all even more in the coming year. Now, to get to this testimony, most of you know that uh, I had a knee replacement in August. Everything went well. I'm going to just uh, kind of go through it quick. Uh, everything went well for several days after surgery. And then, I'm not sure what happened, but I went down in my health. I lost weight, I was sick, and finally uh, went to the doctor. And anyway, they put me back in the hospital and doing things. Uh, but it didn't raise me up. It didn't lift me up. Well, we kept praying every day and night. And I know everyone here prayed, and other people prayed for me, friends and family. And that's what counts. That's what does it. And you keep your faith and your patience. Because God's not going to answer you right away. And he will do it in his time and at the right time and the right thing. Well, anyway, I was sick for several days. I had no energy. I was asking God to just take me. It was that bad. And I believed that I was close to it. But God said, no, I, you know, I got something for you yet. One morning, one Monday morning, I woke up. And I got up. And I felt so good, you know, I, I just felt new, you know, I didn't hurt, uh, my attitude was good, everything was great. But also, during this period of suffering, I would have a good day, then I would have several bad days. And so I thought, well, I hope this isn't one of those. So I was kind of dreaded Tuesday morning. But from Tuesday morning, from that Monday, actually, every day has been great. I have been, had my energy back. I've been able to eat. God has lifted me up. That was a miracle just to do that, you know. And I give him the glory because not anything I did or the doctors did could do that to me so quick. Now, to move on, I'm still having problems inside. I have some blood issues. And the doctor, the heart buses, checked me again. And he found uh, carotid vessels. I think that's right, isn't it, Green? <laughs> uh, these vessels that go to your brain were quite a bit plugged. One was 70, the left one was 70%, which is very high. And the left one, I don't remember it. But he said, we need to put a stent in this one. Well, it's also going to affect everything else that's wrong. And uh, he said also there's a 6% chance of a stroke when we do this. So he said, you need to think about this. Well, I did. but uh, And I was feeling good, so I'm thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't, you know, I don't want to test the Lord here. And uh, but I said, well, no, we need, to, we need to go ahead with it. Well, it was three weeks from the time he discovered this till we could get into the OR. Okay, during this three weeks, everybody's praying. We're praying day and night that this will be all right, be the end of this, you know. And uh, when we went into the OR, and they didn't put me out. I was uh, wide awake. They did not give me any medicine to, like, dissolve this plaque or drill it out or anything. I mean, nothing was done, nothing. But we prayed about this. So when they went in, they went in the left one first. I could hear them talking, because, you know, they're right there by me. He said, I can't believe this, the Dr. Acharya. He said, this, this doesn't like the picture we took three weeks ago. He said, I, I can't believe this. Well, he is a Christian. And he said, let's check this other one. So he checks the right side, and it was the same way. In other words, what he said, where it was 70% was down to 50%, and the right side was also uh, a lot less. He said, we don't have to worry about that. We don't need to put stents in. 
Everything's going to be all right. We'll just keep an eye on it. But we know God did this. That's the only position that could do it, you know. And I just wanted to share this with y'all because if you keep your faith and pray regularly to God, He will answer those prayers. And I'm living proof of that because I was so close several times. And yet He pulled me through. He got something for me to do, and I'm, I want to do it. You know, I'm so happy with this. And I've heard of these things happening. You see it on the news where people had a tumor or something. They go back in and it's not there. Well, I've heard that. I never thought it happened to me, but it just did last week. Uh, I just couldn't believe it. You know, I mean, I just feel so humbled to God that he would take his time and pick me out of millions of people here and say, I'm going to heal you. I need you to do some work for me, you know. But I want to share this with you. God bless y'all. I give God the glory because he's the one to do it all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I got stories from Vegas, but I can't tell them here. No, it, we, had a, we had a great time. We had a great time in Vegas. We had a great group of people go with us. We had a good time, and uh, I'll never have to go back. It was loud. Everywhere you went, it was loud. Uh, I, I, I don't even, I, I couldn't tell you what the people that we were with were talking about in the limo ride over to the rodeo because... I couldn't hear anything. And they were screaming at each other to have a conversation. It was loud. But anyway, we had a good time. We had a blast. Anybody need a Bible? Brother Dan, got some Bibles here. Anybody need right there behind you, Dan? We, uh, we got to meet Drunk Ryan while we were in Las Vegas. Uh, we were coming out of, our, out of the MGM Grand to go get breakfast Saturday morning, I think. And this young fellow walking down the sidewalk with a whiskey glass had some kind of concoction, it was what, I don't know, 8 o'clock in the morning? He was down to the olives and what was left, whatever was left under the ice. And he just attached to us and uh, just walked with us and we went and got breakfast and he wound up buying breakfast. It was, it, I don't know, it, only in Las Vegas or something like that happened. But anyway, uh, y'all remember that game show, Let's Make a Deal? I, I hope I hope I'm not telling on myself here. There's a lot of people that said that. Who 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 knows who Monty Hall is? Anybody? Everybody? All the old people. <laughs> I'm included. I'm included. I said I knew who it was. All right, y'all y'all gonna have to pretend with me a little bit this morning, okay? Number one, I need y'all to pretend that I have the ability to make this game show happen, okay? Now, I need y'all to pretend that the vehicles you drove here are the only vehicles you have. And right now, I'm going to offer you all $100,000 for your car. It's yours. How many people will take that right here, right now? A lot of hands went up for $100,000 for their vehicle. Okay, so if you remember the game show, there's something behind curtain number two. Okay? What if I told you that I would give you a million dollars for your car. How many of you would take that? There are less hands, less hands than the 100000 Here's the deal. The million dollar deal is you can't collect your money for three weeks. And you have to leave your car here. That's the only car you've got. You've got to leave it here. And you come back here three weeks on a Sunday, and I'll give you a million dollars. Everybody good with that? That means, that means you're going to have to walk to work. You're going to have to take a taxi. Ride your horse. <laughs> Calling in sick for three weeks. <laughs> you do have a million dollars coming at the end of it, don't you? All right, well, here, here's, here's, here's where we're going with this today. We, we get caught up in this world, in our worldly possessions. And we tend to live for today. We tend to live for right now, in the moment. Uh, we want to have the fancy cars, the jet skis, the boats, uh, the big horse trailers, the fancy trucks to pull the big horse trailers. We want all these things now. Okay? But what does Jesus offer us? 
eternity. He offers us salvation for eternity. He saves us forever. His gifts, His rewards are good for today through eternity. The very day that you accept Jesus Christ into your life, the very day that you get saved, your life will be gifted from that day forward through eternity, through your death, until you get to the pearly gates in heaven. It's taken care of. All you have to do, okay, all you have to do is live righteously. But that's so difficult. It's so hard to do. You talk about Vegas. Man, if there was anybody living righteously in Vegas the entire time we were there, it was hard to find. Okay? Because when they tell you that that's Sin City, you come into the hotel lobby after 9 p.m. and you know why it's Sin City. You wake up at 8 a.m. and there's people that still haven't been to sleep sitting at the same slot machine from when you went to bed at 9 o'clock the previous night. The city that never sleeps, okay? It was crazy. It was crazy. But, but, we have to realize, and we're going to get some scripture in just a second that, that gives us the answers. We have to realize that today, when we, when we accept Jesus into our hearts and, and we accept Him as our Lord and Savior, our lives change. We have to put in some work. He tells us that we're going to face persecution. Okay? We're going to face that. Because people look at us like we're crazy. Alright? You, you should have seen the guys, there were two or three guys uh, sitting on bridges just sitting there trying to hand out crosses and Bibles. And there were people just walking back and forth, back and forth, not even paying attention to them. And these guys weren't saying a word. They were just sitting there trying to give Chris, uh, Christian documents away. That's the way this world treats Christians. Why do you think that we're praying at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. for this nation? Why do you think we're mentioning that Christ's name is in Christmas? Because people look right past that. They don't even recognize that Christ's name is in Christmas. They don't know what it's about. All they care about is what's under that pretty wrapped paper back there. This world, not only during Christmas, every day of the year, looks at a Christian and just keeps on walking. Very few people will sit and have a conversation with you if you try to stop to strike up a conversation. And it doesn't even have to be about Christ. But the minute it does, they're gone. They get uncomfortable. They don't like the way it makes them feel. You're pushing that on me. I don't, I don't like you. You're, you're pressuring me. It's not about pressure, brother. It's about me trying to save you. Okay? Jesus Christ gave me direct orders. I'm going to go out and make disciples, bring other people to Him. And I can't do that if you feel uncomfortable. Let me move you past that uncomfortable feeling. Let me move you to the point to where you're standing here with me and we're having a conversation and everybody else is just drowned out in a sea of a million people. There's nobody there but me and you having a conversation. Let's get to that point. But we always want to make a deal. Well, you know... I got this opportunity to, to put $100 in this slot machine so I can try to make a bank note when I get home. I didn't have $100 to put in the slot machine. Okay? But people do it. People put all their savings into, the, into gambling and into the lottery tickets and, and all these things to try to make a fortune so that they can live better. But if they just understood... If they just understood where that easiness comes from, they'd have a lot of money already because they'd have saved it by now. They'd, have been, they'd, they'd, have, they'd have that padded bank account because they wouldn't be spending it foolishly. They'd have gone to Jesus, they'd have accepted Jesus, and they'd have found the, the lighted path, the easy road. Okay? Things change. People change. Sometimes better, sometimes worse. But we've got to quit making the deals for the here and the now. We've got to quit thinking about, okay, let's, let's just, take, just take my family, for example. We're, we're trying to get the house remodeled so we can sell it, right? We've got all these grand ideas written on napkins and paper towels and graph paper of what the new house is going to look like and, 
and what we want it to have and what we don't want it to have and you know, how big my shop's going to be and where I'm running my lines for my air compressor. All this stuff is put down on paper. But we forgot to pray. This was six months ago. Okay? This was six months ago we started this remodel. We forgot to pray. We didn't ask God to bless this project. We didn't ask Jesus to help me through it all. I had Brother Danny come over to help me cut a piece of, uh, an angle on a piece of countertop. We forgot to pray. We had trouble. We stopped. We prayed. Things got a whole lot smoother, didn't they, Danny? It's amazing how that happened. We said, you know what? We forgot to pray. So we stopped what we were doing right there in my front yard, took our caps off, and we prayed. Countertop went in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's just, it's just a matter, it's just a matter of setting your priorities. I should have, I should have had them put Christmas up there in the word Christmas. Christ is right there in the word. It's right there, folks. And nobody, no, people don't want to understand what the reason for the season is. And it's right there in front of them every time they say it or look at it. I mean, how, uh, uh I think it was last year. This year I think it was different. I think it's actually called Christmas break on the calendar for the school this year. But either last year or the year before, it was the winter solstice break. The winter solstice. Today's the first time we've had winter in 10 years. It is not the winter solstice break. It's Christmas break. But that's the way we change things. People, people get frustrated. It's the here and the now. Well, we can't say Christmas anymore because one person said something over in Arizona and now it's spreading this way. It's going across like a, like a plague. So we don't want to offend anybody either. Well, it's not offensive. They don't understand it. That's why we're here, to help them understand. But we gotta let, we got to get past the let's make a deal stuff. Let's go to our first scripture. We're going to be in... Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. That's going to be on page 927 if you're in learning the ropes. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. Y'all earmark this because we're coming back to the whole scripture here in a minute. But uh, for right now, he chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. We're going to come back to this, but I want you to, I want you to keep that sentence in mind, okay? He, he chose to follow Christ and the oppression and persecution that came with it instead of falling in line with the rest of the world and going with the sin of the day, okay? This, this whole let's make a deal thing, it's just like that. You have to choose. You have to be strong enough and you have to find enough courage and the wisdom from Jesus himself to follow him. Knowing that there's going to be persecution. Knowing that all of your friends are still chasing that sin around. It, it, let me just be, I'm going to reiterate, I had an awesome time in Las Vegas. But I felt so out of place. Okay? I really did. I was, I was, there, there were moments I was un uncomfortable in my own skin. Okay? That I had, I had probably one of the best times I've had in a very long time. But I was way out of place. When I was younger, Vegas would have been, woo -hoo -hoo. let me tell you, we'd have had a good time. We had a good time. But I was uncomfortable. Okay? That's because God, that's because I chose to follow God. Alright? And, and, and when the day we found out that we were going to see Rodney Carrington, my buddy Mark went with us. He met me right here in the highway going out. He goes, Yeah, you know, it might be a little uncomfortable when we go see Rodney. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was very uncomfortable with Rodney Carrington, let me tell you. It was not what I was expecting. Okay? So anyway, I chose to follow this path. Okay, I chose to follow it. And I have been blessed beyond anything I could ever explain to you. But the persecution, uh, 
being put in uncomfortable situations. Did you guys did you guys know I was uncomfortable? You can tell a couple of times, yeah. But for the most part, man, I, you know, I just went right along with the crowd. But I chose this. I accepted it. When I said yes, the day I said yes, I quit fighting. I gave up on having to take the long way around. Because that's what I was doing. God was taking me here the whole time, but I was going the long way to get here. Okay? I gave up. I said, okay, Lord, I'm done fighting you. I give it all to you. Tell me what you need me to do. And my life got so much simpler. Things became clearer. Okay? My heart became, I don't know if it's possible, became bigger. Maybe, maybe all the junk just emptied out of it and it, it felt like it was bigger. I'm not sure, okay? It was easy to walk away from drinking. All right? It was easy to walk away from uh, smoking. I ain't smoked a day in my life. <laughs> Somebody trying to quit smoking? No? Okay. Oh, I'm just checking. That was kind of out of the blue. I, I gave up the Friday and Saturday night poker games. I gave up, uh, and I gave up a lot of stuff, okay? And it was easy, I just walked away. I turned my back and I walked away because I changed. I don't, I don't feel the pressure of that uh, exotic 40 by 40 uh, building on my property that I have as a workshop that also doubles as a uh, entertainment shed in the back. Or I, I don't feel that pressure anymore like I did six months ago. Okay? Everything has changed. Everything changes for a reason. I'm not making deals today to get me through to tomorrow. I'm not robbing Peter to pay Paul. Okay? I have direct and, and, and uh, concise path that God has laid out before me. Walking away from sin is hard. Hard, 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 hard. I know it is. You don't, have to, you, don't, you don't have to argue with me. You don't have to sit down and talk to me about it. I know what you're feeling because I was there. Playing let's make a deal with the devil versus playing let's make a deal with God. It's not even close, folks. What you get today from the devil is only taken away from what you get from Jesus in the long run. We've got to get to that deal now, we've got to go to curtain number one right now. Okay, the devil's curtain number two. Jesus is number one. We've got to go to that curtain first. We've got to make that deal for today and forever. We can't wait. We can't say, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and accept Jesus, but I've got to go to, I gotta go to Vegas first. Or I've got to go to, I gotta go to Maui. I've got to go buy this new horse trailer and truck. I gotta go do all these things before I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior because I know Brother Kevin says I'm gonna change after that happens. So let me go ahead and get all this sin out of the way right now. That's not the way it works. We can't do that. We can't have that mentality. That's what's wrong with this world. We're all too happy to say, give me pleasure today and I'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Amen? That's just the way the world thinks. Turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23 on page 861 if you're in Learning the Ropes. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Sin equals death. What, what in the world do we not understand about the free gift of God being eternal life? Do we not care about what happens to ourselves when we go when we're gone? Where do we go? Does anybody wonder where we go when we die? There's got to be somewhere we go, right? We don't, they don't just shove us in a pine box and a hole in the ground and that's it. That can't be it. That can't be it. That can't be why God put us here. There's got to be something more. This kingdom of heaven, this is, this is where everybody's shooting for, right? This is what Christians are, are, are dying for worldwide. They're being persecuted and executed. And, and, and for what? What are they doing this for if there's not eternal life? 
waiting. You ever thought about that? Why these people are going on mission trips to countries who will shoot you if they just see you carrying a Bible? Why do they do that? Why are they doing that? Why, why would they risk putting their lives in danger if there's not the free gift and the promise of eternal life? They know. We know. Christians across the world know that God has gifted us a free gift through Jesus Christ. All we have to do is accept Him. All we have to do is accept Jesus into our hearts. And we have that free gift. It's free. You don't have to make a deal. You don't have to put money on the table or in a slot machine. It's free. Who doesn't like free? Everybody likes free. Okay? Everybody. I mean, if they were giving away free uh, Girl Scout cookies in Ireland, I'd be gone right now. Okay? I mean, free is good. Everybody loves free. The free gift of God. All you have to do is accept His Son. That's all you have to do. Yeah. Turn with me to uh, page 911, 1 Timothy. Whoops, pass it up. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Page 911 if you're in learning the ropes. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Now you know why I quit going to the gym. That's not why. But that just came to me. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Better, Promising benefits in this life, okay, here and now, this life, and the life to come. Spiritual training, reading your Bible, coming to church, going to Bible study, going on missions, talking to your neighbors about Jesus Christ, talking about Jesus in Walmart, the grocery store. All of these things are the practices that lead to a better life now and the life to come. Okay? It's not about, it's not about, you know, there are, there are a lot of people here who read their Bible. They read their Bible at home. They read their Bible at work. But they never utter a word. They're scared. They're sitting on their hands because they don't want that persecution. They don't want that ridicule. They don't want to get in a heated argument. How many people have ever started a conversation about the Bible and it immediately turned into an argument? Okay. Did you, did you complete your argument? How many of you completed your argument? God gave you the words, didn't He? God gave you what you needed to battle. Because that's what He does. God gives me the words every Sunday. God will provide what you need any given moment, any given time. Do not be afraid that you're going to be made to look dumb. God is not going to let that happen to you. If you're doing battle for Him, He will glorify you in the battle. He will protect you. He will give you everything you need to show that other person exactly where they're wrong. It is not, it is not a matter of you having to have your Bible with you. you. You Hold on just a second. Just just wait a minute. I said wait a minute. And you start looking through the Bible. No. God's just going to put it in your head and you're going to spit it out. And at some point, this other person that's arguing with you who may or may not be a Christian, may or may not even believe in God, they're just going to shut up. You're going to shut them down. You're going to turn them off. They're going to walk away. Or they're going to sit and ask for more. They're going to want to learn. They're going to want to know how come you were able to answer every one of their, or have a rebuttal for every one of their arguments, every one of their points. They want to know how you came about all of this. They're going to be intrigued because They've been misled for so many years that they've turned sour and didn't even want to learn, didn't even want to know. They just assumed that everything they've been told was true. But you see, you've got training. You've got training. Training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and the life to come. It's not about being hard-headed. It's not about being holier than thou. It's not about being goody two-shoes. It's just about Jesus. 
If we could just get people to understand it's just about Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about Philip or Dan or Alan or Danny or Troy. It's not about Miss Becky. It's not about Miss Lori. It's not about any of you. It's not about any of us. It's about Jesus. All we need to do is get people to understand what it's about. 